So to continue on with our QJet autopsy from uh, the other day, um, I'll show you what I've been, what I've found, uh, what I've been working on, and uh, which direction I'm going. Um, there was a few things that I found that were, uh, I guess, say discerning uh, or concerning. <laughs> I, I had to focus on, uh, well, at, at first I really didn't find too much that was wrong, maybe some leaking well plugs. Uh, of course, the gasket was burned um, on our quarter jet project uh, for the uh, for our 85 Suburban with the big block Buick. But uh, here was the big factor, okay? Let me flip the camera around, we'll get going. Okay, so here we are. I had the carburetor completely disassembled. I didn't find too many things that were wrong. And especially something that would cause a problem with like say a fire in the float bowl um generally it's such a fuel rich environment that you it won't burn because there's so much fuel in there there's not enough oxygen but here was the thing that kind of tipped me off all right as it burned around the float bowl uh on our gaskets if you pull a gasket up here and you see where it's burned around the float bowl um you can definitely see the charring and everything that occurred here. It got me thinking like, well, maybe somehow air is getting in there. I mean, I know it's got a vent at the top, but there would have to be some way to get air in here, especially like you see this area where it's charred here. Um, that's, that's actually next to your power piston, which is technically sealed off right here from any air. So I started thinking like, well, let's look at the air horn. Uh, and because this is the air horn gasket, Let's look at the air horn and see what was going on. All right, so what I did was I took the air horn and I got a machinist rule. And then I started checking um, with the machinist rule with a feeler gauge, right? Now this is 5,000 now. Um, I originally was checking it with like a, a 3,000 and then I realized no matter what I did, it was already over 3,000. So I'd lay this across and then you would check at every point at which it meets the gasket surface with the 3000 feeler gauge. Well, here's what ended up happening. I get up here to, to across the uh, bolt holes where you bolt it down and the air horn was absolutely atrocious. I mean, it was like 15 thousandths of clearance um, across these bolt holes. So what had happened is someone obviously has torqued them down like way too much on the air horn and it got me thinking like okay well let me see about another air horn and i i do have another air horn and i i had to spend some time cleaning this one up but i had put this air horn on originally like i told you with the carburetor it had been hit by a hammer right so you look at this one and this is not the original one the original top for that carburetor is here okay and you can see here where somebody had hit it with a hammer uh, multiple times because they were pissed off at it because it wasn't running right or it wasn't doing what they wanted it to do. And uh, in reality, when I got it home, I found out uh, the secondary air door uh, cam was broken. Um, there was all kinds of things that were screwed up on it. But it, and a lot of the passages were plugged with crap. So, uh, of course, that's what led to them beating with a hammer. So I've always been on a lookout for a new air horn. Well, this carburetor was originally for a 350 Buick and we put it on a 455 originally. And what happens is, uh, let me show you here, get that choke door open. Okay. So this carburetor here was off of a big block, uh, 454 Chevrolet. Um, and you can see down here is openings. Okay. These, the ones that are inboard ones are for the screws that hold the top on. And then these air holes here, are, uh, I believe are for your bleed, your air bleed. The bigger the air bleed, the better it works with a big motor. Right? <clears throat> if you go back to our 350 Buick and look, uh, the holes are considerably smaller, a lot smaller. Okay. And it's made for a 350 cubic inch engine. Well, with this, top on here I, in a 455 Buick I thought it would work well and it did I had plugs that were tan like you wouldn't believe it looked like you had taken them out of a textbook um, but when I went to the smaller cubic inch 400 Buick the those big openings right there I think were minimizing the fuel atomization 
okay? And the, the smaller one, I think, is uh, having a higher, a smaller opening creates a higher velocity and signal, right? So um, I think that's what we're looking at is, that might've been the difference on why I'm, the, it, I just could never get the carburetor dialed in. The, the engine's 55 cubic inches less. But the other thing was the air horn uh, that I originally had on here was, you can see it's really shiny. It was warped like 15 thousandths. Um, and so I've worked this thing with a file for about three hours uh, trying to get it flat. And finally, when I was like, my arm was wicked tired and I'm so tired of just screwing with this thing, trying to get it flat, I realized that most of the surface is starting to get shiny, so I'm getting relatively close. So I start checking it again with the machinist file, or with the machinist uh, ruler and the feeler gauge. After cutting it for like three hours, I put the machinist rule across here and it's still five thousandths off, okay, right here. And I believe what was happening is we had a major vacuum leak around these surfaces because it wasn't sealing against the main body of the carburetor. It was virtually allowing air to get in the carburetor um, around surfaces that are supposed to be sealed. So, you know, I had to take all of the, the, the brass tubes out here that actually is just, you know, for air fitting purposes, but, uh, it just routes air and, and creates vacuum signals in certain parts of the carburetor for what you're doing. So what I did was clean this one up and I'll put this dude back in service. Um, now I checked it with the machinist rule on this one and there's only like one to two thousand uh, clearance issue, right? So it's like, man, do I really want to file that down? The gasket will take up uh, that much difference. Um, you know, and I, if I worked this one longer, I probably could make it work. But with the larger openings on there, I think it's probably the smart choice is just to change the air horn out and, and go with this air horn that was originally for a 350 Buick. And it might, it might allow us to dial it in a little bit better. So, uh, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I'm not uh, entirely sure, but... That's where I'm at today. Uh, so right now, I'm waiting for the JB well to completely dry. I've uh, I've already put it on yesterday, but it's still a little tacky. So I put it in front of the uh, the garage heater here, hoping to speed up the process of um, of those things uh, drying up. So that uh, I, I imagine if I put it together and it's still too wet it's probably just gonna fall off. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, the other thing was the <clears throat> having a fire in the football, I think caused this JB weld to overheat and fall off. Um, it was especially on the primary, the secondary um, well plugs here were sealed up quite well. The primaries, not so much. It virtually was, one of them had fallen off and was laying in the bottom of the carburetor and then the other one just peeled off as soon as I touched it. So I put some more JB weld on, letting it set up overnight, or well, I'm, I'm probably gonna put it together later today, but I let it set up overnight, and then now I'm trying to speed up some of the drying process so I can get the carburetor back together. So that's where we're at with that, and there will be probably, this is part two, there will likely be a part three um, once I get the carburetor together and I start reassembling it. I'm gonna to try to figure out a different metering rod and jet combination. I think it's more ideal for this 400. Uh, the problem I'm dealing with this 400 is that uh, they never made a low compression 400. And that's that's kind of what I did with this uh, 400 that's in the Suburban. They're originally 10 and a quarter to one compression in uh, 1967 to 69. Um, what I've done is I have uh, I put thicker head gaskets on it, and I used a later model head, a 71 head, and that dropped the compression down to eight and a half to one. And uh, unfortunately, the jetting and metering rod combination uh, that's recommended for them is just is not right because it's meant for considerably more compression. Um, I'm thinking a lot of it, and plus this has an RV cam in it instead of a uh, a performance cam. See, the 400 only came 
in the mid-size cars. So you could have got uh, a Skylark or um, even a Skylark wagon with a 400. Uh, anything that would have been like a B-body car would have been a 430. So I think the, uh, the lightness of the vehicle, uh, the change in compression ratio, the different style camshaft, it's, it's playing with me a little bit, trying to get it dialed in. I can't just use the factory recommended settings. It's so far out to lunch that it'll drown the motor. Um, so right now I'm, I'm kind of going back to square one and I'm going to start all over, I believe. So leave your thoughts and comments down the, uh, down the bottom and uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But until uh, later, you know, I'll see you tomorrow.